Welcome back, everybody, to the top eight of the Clash Bash. I am Mo Bogsley, here joined with Elaine. Elaine, how are you doing today? I'm good. I am excited to be back doing commentary for the Clash Bash. It's been a minute. We did a lot um, at, at the beginning, and, and then we had to take a little break because of life, so I'm excited to be back. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, the top eight of Clash is super interesting, and I'm super excited to dive into this format and just see how it goes. Uh, it's a best of three format, which is super interesting. Both players bring two decks, and it's best two out of three. If it goes to the third match, they will choose which hero to play in the third match. So super interesting format, and I'm super excited to watch more Clash. Yeah, me too. Let's jump into it. All right, so the first game we're going to watch is Dromai versus Kano. Do you have any um, initial thoughts on how this matchup might play out in Clash? Yeah, so Dromai versus Kano. Dromai normally doesn't bring Arcane Barrier. As we see here, no Arcane Barrier. However, once Dromai gets those dragons on the battlefield, Kano has almost no way to get rid of them. So Dromai's going to be looking to set that board up of dragons, and if she can, she should win this match. However, Kano could just kill you. So I'm super excited to see where this is going to go. Uh, we saw both these players earlier in this tournament. Alex is on Dromai and Peppa, I might be mispronouncing that, I'm sorry, is on Kano. We saw them on Kano earlier. So, so it looks like we're just coming in for six. It's just attacking for six, no relevant text on this, but in response, Kano does activate Kano, finding a red snapback, I believe, which would do three damage. And this is exactly what Kano wants to be. He wants to be able to throw damage early and fast, while also keeping his life total as high as possible. So sending four damage here in response to this attack, so Kano can still block if needed. Yeah, I think I think in in Clash, and you're the Kano player here. Oh, Sigil. Yeah, Sigil um, really good. It's basically like AB. Sigil really good. Mm -hmm. We just saw that win the Pro Tour a few weeks ago. So Sigil coming back in Jomai, showing why it's so good. That was a crazy moment. I was actually rewatching that uh, that that the other day, this past week. I was rewatching that game. It's just so crazy. I'm still not over it. Um, so block six. So on turn zero, Dromai didn't get any Ash, but set up an arsenal and only lost one life to Kano's four damage, which is like a pretty, pretty great opener from Dromai. Yeah, I think that's not a bad start. And um, Kano did manage to push at least one point of damage through and see one sigil gone. Um, you're the Kano player. So what you think Kano's just trying to chip as much damage as possible. This is a clash format. So without the majestics, I, how big of a combo turn can you really have? Yeah. So the only like power card Kano has is blazing Aether in his deck. Uh, so he is really just trying to get Jomai as low as fast as possible before these mega dragons come, come, come down. Uh, he knows there's no arcane barrier, but there is Oasis. There is. Oh, Sigil. Oasis. So this is exactly oh, how Jomai drew it up. Getting this, an ash from this oasis as well. Not getting a life because Kano does start at 15, but only taking one damage from this is insane. Kano just yeah. had the arsenal pass. Turn one and we've seen an oasis and a sigil from the Droma mm -hmm. side. Yeah, not a good place to be if you're Kano. But that is two cards down, only two more to go. But this is the first dragon. And this one is huge. Demai says, you can only play on your turn, sir. If you want to kill me, you have to do it the old-fashioned way. The Kano hate in this Dromai deck is strong <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah, Alex showed up and said, I'm not losing to a dirty, dirty, dirty Kano player. I will do this with my dragons and just guarantee a win. So Kano's yeah. going to dump his hand here because he has to. So this Demise is all happening in, in response to, yeah, the demise uh, being played on the stack. This is all going on. Moret is scolding. It still is four damage, and Alex has no cards in hand, so he will take that down to 14. Here comes the 
Aether quickening for four more down to 10, even with this dragon on the battlefield. Kano is erasing Dromai's life fast. Alex asking if that theme I can resolve. Getting his ash that is required. And with no way to play anything at instant speed anymore, this Kano has to play in his turn, which is not where you want to be. These wizards are so strong because you can kill your opponent on their turn. Now there's a three damage dragon on the battlefield that Kano cannot interact with at all outside of very specific cards. I wonder what that arsenal card is in <laughs> on Kano's side. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's just like a good like two for five or mm -hmm. uh, it could be an energy potion. But if there's any potion he would have played it there, it's probably just yeah. like a normal two for five good damage spell that, that Kano can play on a, a future turn. Yeah, I also wanted to point out on the Kano side, I was looking at the uh, equipment sweep. It was pretty standard, but I think the Mage Master boots are in the spot where the <laughs> chest piece would traditionally go. And then it looks like the chest is Spellfire cloak on the in the in the boots spot, the traditional yes, spot for the boots. Kano players, like always, we just have the best fashion in flesh and blood. Uh, so sometimes we just want to wear our boots on our chest. Yeah, I think we've talked about this before, right? Kano's really fancy clothes. They're not very protective, but they're very fancy. Very <laughs> really fast. Three. Jomai did just uh, use their Glory Seeker, which is pay three draw card. Oh, my goodness. To play a Clyoria. A Clyoria. Into a Chromite. Into a Chromite. This is exactly oh. what I said. Kano does not want to happen if he wants to win this oh. game. This is... The worst case scenario Ooh. for Kano. However, only at, only at 10 for Jomai. So Kano can maybe still call back. It's still no AP on the battlefield. Still no Ash Rings. There is a blazing Aether blocked. Now here comes four on hit draw card for the Jomai. Uh, this is a card you almost have to block. Otherwise, they just get so much value. There's a block with the Iron Rock Gloves. What was the, the Dromai's headpiece? Uh, Glory Seekers. Pay three, draw oh, card. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Uh, my worry here for Kano is he can't interact with these dragons, so every time he is blocking, he is taking away damage he could have otherwise done because these dragons will not go away. There will only be more of them as this game goes on. Kano with two cards in hand, one in Arsenal. Maybe it's a Blazing in Arsenal, and he can rip some cards off the top and do a ton of damage. Yeah, these are some really crazy dragons to have out to. Probably okay. Mage Master Boots. Next non-attack gets go again. Into an Aether Spindle. Can opt okay. five. So maybe it's a Blazing Aether in hand for five more damage, which would be Exaxes, if that is the case. Assuming the Spellfire... Oh, nope. Is that Spellfire... What's the RP's called again? Silken form? Silken form. So Silken form can prevent <laughs> one of this damage, which would actually prevent two damage if it is a Blazing Aether in hand. But it also gives an Ash Ring, which is AB1. So Ash Ring has been made. Alex, now think about Arcane Barrier. Yep. Pitching a red dust up, I believe, to AB1. So still taking four, three off of the spindle now. Four off the spindle. And, re three and regenerating the that the ash, which is mm -hmm. important and just so good. <laughs> Kano left all three on top into the blazing aether. Into the blazing aether. So this will be for three due to the AB1. Putting Alex down to four if he decides to take all of this damage. Got a little confused on the spin level four because only three right hit. Yeah, I mean, I think that Alex is pretty safe to take, take damage. The board state on Alex's side is just kind of crazy, but it's like... Alex is going to pay one to prevent. 
Pitching a blue this time. Uh, not wanting to use that dust up. Just putting it on the bottom of the pitch deck for later. Also yep. making the ash, which I think was very important that you mentioned. Do you mind not playing Snapdragon Scalers? So you can't give those cards going. Oh in. my gosh. And here's another dragon. Another they don't stop. Thamai. Another Thamai. If one Thamai was bad, this is two Thamais. <laughs> this is 14 damage on the battlefield the lane. This yeah, is this insane. Is, this is this is brutal. This is kind of crazy. Tape taking the first three. Into the next three. This was a two card turn. I mean, a two card fourteen. <laughs> two card fourteen. I will. I think that's pretty good. EV. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Illusionist is fair and balanced. Kano taking his three down to three. Here comes the big one. Four on hit draw card. This one you have to block. Yeah, Kano has to give two cards here. Oh nope. Just nope. one card goes up the two, hoping that Alex doesn't call, draw one cost attack. Here comes the Mai for three more. Blocking it. Kano has two cards left in his hand. Little ash rig is getting frisky. <laughs> Down to one. Like, yeah, go to one. Hope that it's not a one cost attack. And then just try and push. Yeah, push it's only five, five damage, but only two cards. If it's I mean, exactly that... Voltic Bolt for six, Alex can only AB one of it. Oh, he's activating Kano. Oh, you have to play to your outs. Oh, there's a okay. Singe, but Singe is too little too late, unfortunately. Scully coming in for five. That little Ash Ring is putting in a lot of work. That, I would say that if the Ashwing wasn't there, this is lethal. I mean, you're presenting lethal either way, but you're going to have an Ash. And it also, yep, yep. So pitching here for AB just allows for Ash generation too on the Dromai side, which is just disgusting in this matchup. Yeah, Ashwing is just killing it over there. You better get paid overtime for this match. But there's still 14 damage on the battlefield. Maybe Jomai doesn't have a red combat starter. There's no Ash. Ah. I think the Ash... Ash. Was it a mistrigger on the Ash generation? Because Mirror Guy was... Yeah, I believe it was. For the AB. Oh, this is just... Yeah, this is GG. Kano can't play this anything is, due this, to the yeah. demise. Yep. I hate to see my boy, my boy go down like this. This hurts. Yeah, this. I mean, you can't do much against this onslaught of dragons. But it's not over yet. It is not over yet. Tune into the next video to watch Tepe battle again. Boy Kano just got taken down a lane. How did that match? Did it play out like you thought it would, or are you surprised? Um, I think I, well... I'm not going to say I, I had high hopes for, for the Kano going into the matchup. It's a very difficult matchup for Kano. However, that Dromai player just kind of like ran. The Sigil and then the Oasis, as if that Kano hate wasn't bad enough, coming down with the Mai as the very first dragon just kind of... It, that makes a very difficult situation for Kano from the start. I think if it would have been um, possibly like the one of the other like Chromai or Kyloria that we saw first, the Kano, the game could have gone differently, but the Thamai just makes that very difficult. That's a really good point. Dromai was at one at the end of that game. So with that sigil and that Oasis, that was seven free life that Dromai seven, otherwise yeah. would have been dead. So seven Dromai free played life, that game perfectly, knew the matchup, knew what cards to bring in, knew when to play the cards. That was a masterclass drill my game, but Kano also looked great. Like that Kano yeah. player really, really showed us how to play Kano. Yeah, the my going down turn two of the game 
just really hard for the Kano player to deal with at that point. But I mean, like you said, Dromai was at Dromai was at one by the end of it and had played a sigil and an oasis. So the Kano player really put in the work. I think that the mind coming down, um, just really difficult to deal with and the board state just kept growing and growing. But Kano put in the work. One hundred percent. And like I said, both these players, neither one of them is locked for top four yet. We will see them next time. So, Lane, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me. Um, I'll just, I'm just i just going to link my Twitter, which is E Hamontree. Uh, I do a lot of things in one half of the Pitch Perfect podcast and one third of the founders of the Rainbow Pitch League. Um, and both of those links are linked in my Twitter bio, which, again, is E Hamontree. Um, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Mobogsley. Uh, I shitpost almost daily on there. So if you need some more shitposting in your life, feel free to give me a follow. We will see All you right, guys. Well, yeah, good job to great both players. And we'll see how the next round plays out. Mm-hmm.